Y'all, too many people treat Michael Jeffrey Jordan like a god, and I'm seeing it now, right? It's starting to get disturbing. It's really starting to get very, very weird. So, uh, Willie D of the Ghetto Boys was on Vlad TV, and he was discussing his sentiments about Michael Jordan and how he doesn't respect Michael Jordan for certain things that he's done, including how he treated Chameleon Air when Chameleon Air approached him for a picture. Now, for those who don't know the backstory, Chameleon Air, just like every other kid in the 80s and 90s, grew up like huge fans of Michael Jordan. Like Michael Jordan is the reason why a lot of kids wanted to play basketball and wanted to be in the NBA because they watched this dynamic player, this phenomenon in the NBA, like Michael Jordan, right? So Kamir there being a huge fan of Mike, he was at an auction and uh, Michael Jordan throwback jerseys were being sold. So Kamir there, he buys the jerseys for like $7,000, right? Michael Jordan happens to be at this auction. He sees Mike and he approaches Mike and asks for a picture. Michael Jordan looks at Chameleon and says, man, oh, hell no. I don't take no pictures with no niggas, right? And Chameleon is looking like, what the hell? Like, is this an episode of Punked? So he said, you know, I asked him again, like, I don't know if you heard me, Mike, but I just spent $7,000 on your jerseys. Uh, can I get a picture with you? Michael Jordan looks at Chameleon and says, I'll tell you what, if you pay $15,000 for, for my jerseys, then I'll take a picture with you. Right. And everybody, he looking at Spike Lee and all of them and Spike Lee looking like, hey, man, it's just the way Mike is. It's just the way Mike is. So Paul Pierce, another NBA player, looks at Michael Jordan and say, Mike, you know, that's comedian. He's a rapper. He cool. He's a cool guy. And Mike say, I don't give a F-U-C-K, nigga. Right. And, and like comedian, like I want the bus. I want to steal off that man. But you know what? I ain't do it. I just say, you know what? Bless y'all. God bless all the rest of y'all. And he walked off. Right. And. Willie D talks about how he don't respect that, right? And you got grown men, grown-ass men with kids caping for Michael Jordan. Like, a comedian that shouldn't have never approached Mike. He shouldn't have never approached Mike. Like, he see everybody got bad days. True enough, everybody has bad days. But where I come from, I treat, where I was raised, I treat people with respect. I don't disrespect another man unless that man dis disrespects me or my family. Michael Jordan humiliated comedian in public intentionally. Try to emasculate him and disrespect him. And everybody act like it's all cool, it's cool, because Mike is the greatest player of all time. It should be it should be acceptable. Hell no, nah, because if a scrub on the bench would have said that to Camille now, half of y'all dudes caping for Mike would have been fighting or would have said Camille that should have fought the dude. Straight up. But because it's Michael Jordan, every man got a, a man got every excuse in the book for Mike. Man, he Michael Jordan was with women. He should have known not to approach Mike when he was standing with women. What the hell they got to do with what? Michael Jordan knows he's an icon. Michael Jordan knows and understands how iconic he is. And he knows that a lot of people uh, really are huge fans of his. But instead of Mike, you know what I'm saying, like really taking it gracefully, it go to Mike's head. And Mike feel like he can treat anybody any type of way he wants to. Grown ass men caping for Mike. Like, y'all, leave Michael Jordan alone. Leave MJ. Like, when they say MJ, I know they real fanned out. When they MJ, MJ, they say, I know they real fanned out at that point. Y'all got to leave MJ alone. Leave MJ alone. Cut MJ some slack. Man, hell no, man. Stop treating Michael Jordan like he all daddy. It's getting disturbing. It's really getting weird. That man is not y'all father. Stop. And look, I acknowledge Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. But you got me and caping for everything. That, like when somebody disagrees with Michael Jordan or disagrees with something that Michael Jordan has done, you got people calling that person salty. They a hater. They jealous of Mike. They want to be like Mike. They want they want Mike life. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, cause Willie D disagree with how he did what with what he did to Chameleon there. Now Willie D is jealous of Mike and he a hater. Like, get the hell up out of here, bro. It's like, like y'all Michael Jordan extremists will tell, like y'all will tell y'all think Michael Jordan did no wrong at all in his in his entire life. Y'all will never acknowledge he did any wrong at all. And let y'all tell it, Michael Jordan can turn Gatorade into wine. Like, that's, it's crazy, man. And it's people saying, Camille, that should have just got over it. And he shouldn't have never told their story. He should have just got over it like any other person would. He's soft. Camille, that's soft, man. Y'all should have just got over it, man. What the hell? Soft? Soft and sensitive? If Camille, is sensitive, why Michael Jordan still ain't get over my, uh, Isaiah Thomas not shaking his hand? Why Michael Jordan still ain't forgave Charles Barkley for saying that the Charlotte Hornets were a bad basketball team, which they were. The month, like, Charlotte, is t Charlotte was terrible. Trash. The Mars was garbage, right? And Charles Barkley, respectfully, like man, he didn't he didn't uh, say anything disparaging about Michael Jordan. Now we know Michael Jordan is the GM of the team and the owner of the team or whatever, but 
He just said, hey, this collection of guys are not getting it done. They're not, they not uh, getting the job done. They're not going to cut it. And they, they just not a good bunch together. Michael Jordan don't want to talk to – he don't even want to talk to Charles Barkley no more because Charles Barkley said that, right? He didn't say nothing disparaging or derogatory about Mike. He just said this collection of guys is not – them guys is not going to get it done. And Mike don't want to talk to him. Now, if you ask me, y'all saying comedian that sensitive? What? And y'all saying Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas is sensitive for not shaking hands? Michael Jordan is extremely sensitive and petty for not talking to Charles Barkley, fam. Like, what? Like, it is crazy, man. If you disagree with Mike, you jealous, you bitter, or you want to be him. And Mike only like to keep people around him, it seems like, who, who are, I guess, will always just say he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Or, you know, he want everybody around him to say nothing but good things about him, right? And I know this because I watched when Scottie Pippen went on ESPN first take and said that basically uh, LeBron was like a better player all around than Michael Jordan. He did all different. He did. He was a better all around player than Michael Jordan. And the next day, like Scottie came and retracted his statements after he said that on ESPN first take. The very next day, right? Mike applied that pressure to Scottie and made him stay. Made him stay. Uh, he made Scottie come out and say that. Oh, he made uh, Scotty retract that statement so he can stay in good graces with Mike. Like, what the hell? Like, really? Really? And then when Mike, when Scotty said that LeBron was a better all-around player, you got dudes coming out. Scotty just jealous of Mike. Scotty wanted to be like Mike. Scotty wanted Mike's status because he never he never was on Mike level. All this, all this other bullshit. Like, it's really crazy, man. Like, anytime somebody don't agree with Mike, they jealous or they a hater. They want to be like Mike. They want his lifestyle. They want to be him. Like, Man, bro, everybody not fanned out groupies like y'all, like a lot of y'all are. Like, everybody don't look at Michael Jordan as they did he. Like, and I'm not saying that you cannot be a fan of nobody. I'm a huge fan of LeBron James. You can be a huge fan of Michael Jordan. That's perfectly fine. I'm a huge fan of LeBron James that acknowledges that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, right? I will acknowledge that. But LeBron is my guy. You can And you can wear Mike jerseys. You can wear paraphernalia. You can go ahead and go on a limb for your guy. But to make excuses for him... For how he treated comedian, that's something that is inexcusable. Y'all, it's grown men out here that will make an excuse for like, like if Michael Jordan would have slapped y'all damn kids, grown like if Mike would have Michael Jordan would slap y'all kids, it's grown men that are say, oh, it's okay. Mike can slap my kids. My kids should have never asked Mike for a picture. They can Mike can slap my kids. He the greatest player of all time. He the goat. He can do whatever he want to do. Like get the soft ass. Like bro, it's, it's just crazy, bro. Like some dude so. So they look at Michael Jordan like they did so much. They will let Mike disrespect their kids and their own family because he's Michael Jordan. He can do it. He has a right to do it. He has a right to slap my kids because he's Mike. He can slap the taste out my kids' mouth all they want to because he's Michael Jordan. Like, bro, if y'all don't, like, it, it starts to get ridiculous, man. Like, everything he does is always um, okay. It's always acceptable. And that ain't cool. Because, again, if a, a, the average Joe on the street would have said what uh would have said what Mike said to Chameleon there, or an average NBA player, them same dudes saying that it's okay to, it's okay that Mike said that would have been saying that Chameleon there should have knocked Mike out or should have knocked that dude out if there was another dude that said that to Mike. You know what I mean? But because of Michael Jordan, it's all good and dandy. It's all fine and dandy, and it's cool. Nobody ever sees flaws in Michael Jordan, but they see flaws in everybody else. It's like, and I ain't even talking about on the basketball court. Even outside of the court, people don't act. People act like you know, um, Mike can just do whatever he wants to. It's all good. There's no objectivity involved in that man at all, right? And it's another thing I hate because black people, a lot of our people. Now I expect you know some non-black people. They just they don't see certain stuff just because they don't want to see it sometimes. And sometimes they live in their own little bubble where they don't really see black people for real, for real. I don't, don't see the issues we face. But you got some black men that try to pull this out, pull this card out, right? Now, again, Michael Jordan doesn't have to speak on social issues because everybody not cut from that cloth. Mike not cut from that cloth. He not cut like that. You know what I mean? Like, he not built to speak on social issues. He not built for that war. He not. That's not something he wants to take on. Okay, cool, right? But when people say stuff like this, when people criticize Mike for not speaking out on certain issues or social issues affecting the black community or not even releasing a statement involving uh, kids getting killed over his shoes or so on and so forth, people always say this. Black people got to stop looking at entertainers to be our leaders and our uh, they got to stop looking at entertainers and sports players to be our leaders. 
knowing damn well we don't look at entertainers and sports people to be us and sports figures to be our leaders. Black people don't look at these uh, entertainers and athletes as being our leaders. But you know who looks at them as being our leaders? Other non-black people, especially the majority population. Like white people, be, white people look at Michael Jordan and all these other figures that are high, like high on the totem pole. The entertainers, they look at the entertainers as the black people leaders. They look at them like that, right? Not black people. White people and other non-black people look at Michael Jordan and them as, the, as our leaders, right? And why? With with them look with them people looking at uh, with non-black people looking at Michael Jordan and other people uh, and other entertainers as our leaders. Like people want Michael Jordan to say something because they their their voice holds weight to non-black people. It's people in the Ku Klux Klan that will stop. And listen to anything Michael Jordan say. It's people in the Ku Klux Klan that will wash Michael Jordan dirty draws. That's how much power and influence he has, right? And with that influence, you know how much awareness it can spread? You know how much people will probably stop and think if Michael Jeffrey Jordan were to say something about some stuff going on, police brutality and all that in America? You know how many people would stop and listen if Michael Jordan said it? So it ain't about all black people looking at uh, entertainers as our leaders because we don't look at them as our leaders but white people a lot of white people in high places and other non-black people they look at michael jordan and all these other people as our leaders so with them looking at them as our leaders if they speak out about some issues that's affecting our people you know how many of them will probably stop and listen and try to make a change because michael jeffrey jordan the greatest basketball player of all time had something to say about it and was really voicing his opinion about it that's that's why that matters, right? That's why his voice matters because of his influence. But y'all stop copping out for Mike. We don't black people don't look at uh, entertainers as our leaders. We don't look at these people as our leaders. But you know, as well as I know, that a lot of non-black people look at our entertainers as leaders for us. Why I don't know because they influence. Because honestly, those, those athletes got influence outside of the black community tremendously. Rappers and all that. Look at Wayne. Lil Wayne concert be full of white kids. Full of non-black kids, for real. So look how much our entertainers influence spreads outside of the black community. So I don't know. That's why they look at that's why they look at our entertainers as leaders because the our entertainers our entertainers influence their kids. Influence, you know, uh even their cousins, their nieces, their nephews, and even influences them. So that's why that matters. But to cut all they people are always trying to cut Mike off the hook in some type of way. So you get black men. For real, that understand. If I, I promise you right now, if LeBron James, because I know a lot of older black men have this disdain towards LeBron because of the MJ and LeBron comparisons. If Michael Jordan was the one speaking up and LeBron didn't say something, they would villainize uh, LeBron James if LeBron wasn't speaking up and Michael Jordan was, right? But because it's the great Michael Jordan that's not, y'all got to cut MJ some slack. Leave him alone. Leave him alone, you guys. Leave him alone. Leave Michael alone. Don't mess with Mike. Leave MJ alone. He doesn't have to. He doesn't, like, fam, we know he don't got to, bro. Stop crying, bro. We know he don't got to. You know, but it's always an excuse for whatever, everything he does. Again, I'm not saying he has to be an activist. He doesn't have to be an um, a, a activist. He doesn't have to be a, 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 um, a spokesperson a spokesperson for police brutality or, or against, against police brutality. He doesn't. But if he did, it would make a huge effect, I believe. And that's why some people feel like they wanted Mike to speak out or even or at least say something about his shoes or at least tell Nike, say, hey, make my shoes in abundance so everybody can get them or it's available to everybody. So people won't feel like they got to commit all type of crimes to get to get my shoes or whatever. Right. But anyway, man. Um, yeah. And, and again, I know everybody not been from the same wars and everybody Mike ain't cut like that. Just like a lot of the other entertainers from back in the day were not cut like that to cut to speak out about social issues. They were scared. That their product was going to get damaged, or they weren't going to their their money was going to be affected, and that's all right. It is what it is. But you know, to make excuses for Mike when it comes to how he treats people or treating Camille like he wasn't nothing, like he was like he was a low life, treating Camille like he was a nobody, like he was not, not a nobody. Because I don't care if it was just a common man, and Mike said it to a regular man, it would have still been foul. But to, for him to do that. That ain't cool. And you got grown men up there. That I don't believe come in there. He lying. Come in there lying. The goat would never do that. That don't sound like something the goat would do. How the hell, bro? What? Y'all know how I know Michael Jordan said that? 
Because Michael Jordan sent Chameleon a care package. The Jordan brand sent Chameleon a whole bunch of care packages offered to try to get him some all type of Michael Jordan apparel and all this and all of that to make up for it. Because they know Michael Jordan said that. They know that. And Michael Jordan got a history of lying. Because I remember when Nori went on his podcast and said that Michael Jordan said F rap. When I think Red Man or somebody was trying to take a picture with Mike. And they told Mike, hey, a rapper Red Man want to take a picture with you. And Michael Jordan said F rap, right? F-U-C-K rap. And then Michael Jordan came out and said, oh, Nori is lying. He was never at that party. He was never there. So Nori pulled out proof, found a picture of Michael Jordan at this very same party that Mike denied being at. So that's how I know Mike be lying. He be lying. But, you know, Michael, you can't tell Michael Jordan fanatics that. No, not they, not they go. They go, don't lie. He don't say nothing. Ain't no flaws in him. It's not no flaws in him. I can acknowledge flaws in LeBron James, but you know, ain't no flaws in Mike. He ain't no, 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 not they Michael Jordan. Not my people, <laughs> the Michael Jordan fan fanatics. Not my Mike. Not my goat. Mm -mm. Not, uh uh. He didn't say that. It's like, bro, cut it out, bro. Cut it out. But you got people just like acting, oh, he didn't say that. Like, come on, fam. Michael Jordan said it. That's why he sent that care package, because he know he was in the wrong. And come in, what he got to lie about that for? Why would he make a story about the greatest player of all time doing something like that? Knowing it would get out because of him, him being a rapper, it would definitely spread faster than a common person. Why would come in and lie and make that up? For what reason would he do that? But you got people trying to find a reason not to, to absolve. Find, they're trying to find a reason to absolve Michael Jordan for saying those things. And again, the people trying to uh, excuse Mike for saying it are the same people that are let Mike slap the hell out their kids. And then they'll say... Mike can slap you if you want to, son. He's the GOAT. Respect him. Don't like <laughs> Like, you let your kid be looking at you like, damn, daddy, you gonna let this grown man slap me, man? Like, that's how some of that's that's how some of y'all be acting, man. It's ridiculous. But y'all gotta stop treating that man like a god. There's only one guy. Only one. We're like, y'all gotta relax, bro. It's just it's starting to get real, real. Like, it's it start the, the lines are getting blurred. Like, I'm starting to believe men will follow. Men look at it's, it's some dudes out here that look at Michael Jordan as they God. Like it's 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 getting ridiculous, man. But anyway, man, Machiavelli Mills TV. I didn't talked enough. Peace.